Vishal Harnal, managing partner of 500 Global, early stage venture fund with over 2.7 billion AUM. Vishal uh, joins us uh, here around the desk at the SGX. Great to see you, Vishal. Great to see you, Sri. How Martin. challenging is the climate right now and looking forward uh, across uh, this year? And how are you managing uh, the capital? How are you managing uh, this uh, funding winter? It's an excellent question, and I wouldn't go so far as to say that there's a funding winter. There's definitely a drop in the allocation towards venture in this year, but it really depends on which markets you're investing mm -hmm. in and what the opportunity set in those markets are. So for example, if we're in a financial downturn right now, a bear market, the opportunity set that presents itself in the playbook for a bear market is for the playbook for a bull market. So over the last 10 years, entrepreneurs have been used to getting, and VCs have been used to getting cheap capital, mm. and that's funded certain types of behaviors. And now that there's been a switch or a transition to a different way of doing business, a different modality, we're switching playbooks again. What does investing in a bear market mean? What are the things that you focus on when you're underwriting growth in companies? And so that changes. And along with that, the way capital flows in two as well changes also. So there may be less capital coming from non-institutional investors that aren't used to investing in venture. But what we've noticed is that for institutional investors who have long experience investing in VC, that have done it across market cycles before, that capital allocation really isn't shrinking. Hmm. How would you characterize uh, private versus public valuations? Again, an interesting question. I think private valuations are underwritten with a far longer term time horizon. So while there has been a drop, it's nowhere close to what you're seeing in the public markets. Look, for us, we're in the business of VC. We're less affected by daily news cycles, quarterly finance, taking a much longer term view on technology, which takes a while to adopt. What many forget is even behemoths in the tech world right now, like Amazon, it took about seven years after going public to turn a profit. And so the same thing that we're happening in Southeast Asia right now with the companies that have just gone public over the last 24 months, we have to give them the same kind of leeway to turn profitable, to change the way that they're doing business. That leeway, wouldn't, or runway, if you want to call it that, yes. wouldn't that necessarily in this kind of environment have to be long? The biggest challenge, right, yes. for attracting money. It's like, it's going to take me how long to exit? Yes. Uh, right? I mean, that end point is, who knows? Yes. You know, the good thing about that, Martin, is that in a region like Southeast Asia, we have an unprecedented amount of dry powder in VC right now. There's $15 billion sitting around in funds. So the question we ask ourselves as investors is this, is capital enough to tie companies over whatever we're seeing right now? For the next, what are the opportunity sets that present themselves during times like this? And we always go back to the North Star of VC investing, and it's a very core principle of our firm, which is we've always been contrarian in the way that we invest. Mm -hmm. In VC, if you're consensus, you're not making any money if everyone agrees with you on a certain time to invest, in a company to invest in. So what we try to do is understand the environment and the companies we're investing in from first principles. And how is growth being conducted? Are the companies undervalued, overvalued? How do we see them moving in the last next five years? And what do they need to grow mm. and try to provide those tools? Can we talk about the portfolio companies and uh, the startups that you have on your, on your horizon? And uh, this one called RI, eFishery, one of the yes. most promising companies in Southeast Asia. We, we think eFishery is going to be the marquee company in East Asia. Now, the story is quite interesting, and I think you guys have actually covered it before. What it does is uh, eFishery is a marketplace for fish farmers to sort of like sell fish online. They started by just improving the lives of farmers in Indonesia, fish farmers specifically, by increasing the efficiency with which farming could be done. It started, fish farming is, Indonesia is one of the largest fish exporters in the world, but most farmers lived on subsistence farming because of the high rate of failure of fish, uh, you know, ineffective farming practices, so they first started with technology devices, like these sort of IoT devices you can immerse into fish ponds to track feeding, to track the growth and movement of fish, to optimize the right time to actually harvest the fish, take them out of the water, and now they've built a marketplace on top of that. So it's fast growing into, it's becoming one of the largest companies in the entire region. Wow. So we think that that's part of, so just back to the point, if you were to flash back five years ago and ask anyone, are you investing in agri-tech in Southeast Asia? No one would have said yes. Yeah. Fish farming technology, who's doing that? Mm. And so it's a contrarian bet that man self later, 
and continues to because the demand for something like fish, especially things that are produced at a high productivity level, is What's the value it's, uh, right now, latest? Ah, yeah. ah, it's a cheeky question, Martin. I can't talk about that one. <laughs> I had to ask. It sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a good story, right? It's like, it hey, is, how to grow is, fish ideally, More yield, etc. And then you yield, you, yield a, you uh, layer on a marketplace on top That's of that, right. There, right? That's right. It's a phenomenal company. But seriously, so value, it's not just valuation? about... <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's not just about who's got the deepest pockets. Yes. It, it's, it's activism and it's uh, supporting the management team. Yeah. Walk us through how you apply uh, that thought process and yes. that thought leadership to your portfolio companies. No, it, it's uh, especially when Grab is arguably going through a very tough competitive landscape at the moment in East Asia. Yes, so I'll talk about that first question about how it is that we're supporting portfolio companies. And again, like what are the competencies we're building up and how are we working hand to hand with founders? For us, we just hired three new partners in Southeast Asia. Seyman Ahn, who was formerly the head of Rakuten Ventures, Sharil Ibrahim, who was the head of Kazana Americas, and Martin Ku, who was the head of Ninja Van in the Philippines. And each of them bring a unique facet to work with founders and help them grow. So I'll give you an example. Martin who left Ninja Van, which is one of the Southeast Asian unicorns, expanded them from zero to 2,000 employees in the Philippines himself across, a pandem across pandemic years. So when we think about growth in Southeast Asian companies and founders, one of the competencies that you need is to have experts who can tell you how to expand across markets and across market cycles in different times. So Martin and works with the founders to build out that expertise. Semin did a ton of interportfolio M&A. That's his specialty, how to do cost consolidation, how to make strategic acquisitions of other small companies, whether it's for tech, whether it's for talent, whether it's for optimizing your P&L. So he's working with founders in building that out. And Sheryl has a vast experience investing across various different stages of companies. And so the idea is, how are pre-IPO investors going to think when they look at a growth stage company? Right. How are these later stage guys <clears throat> going to deal with this stuff and working with founders like that? So the idea is we make our bench stronger to help in very specific areas that we think founders are going to need assistance with. And this is not something that we've invented. It's coming from investing in Southeast Asia for the last decade and saying, what does the next decade look like? And where do we need to, yeah. you know, where do we need to skate towards? I like the idea, right? See, these guys are sort of like mentors. Uh, the idea I was thinking of was uh, they, they're like shepherds. But uh, anyway, listen, Vishal, we got to go. Fantastic talking to you. Thanks. So good talking to Come you. Come back and see you very soon. Done. Yeah, Done. pleasure. Vishal Haran, there are 500 Global joining us live.